Abahi here and in today's video let's answer the question of what's the difference between an inside adjuster and an outside adjuster okay stay tuned I'm a claims adjuster if I can help you make money in this very lucrative industry would you let me if so subscribe hit that like button as well okay so back to the question about being an indoor adjuster or an outdoor adjuster here's the hard cold facts there's indoor adjusting and then there's outdoor adjusting both of them will make the same money if you're working hourly okay 37 50 i mean give or take a few dollars depending on what company you're working with if you're working with a small firm and you're new they tend to pick, i've heard I've heard, I haven't seen it for myself, but I have heard them starting folks under $30 an hour, which is really a shame because you're doing the same work as some as your counterparts and they're new too. When I'm working as an indoor adjuster, you'll have uh, maybe a start time of about 7.30, could be eight, nine, just depends on your firm and what their business needs are, right? From there, uh, you'll have the opportunity to sit at a desk with other people around you, have a nice little headset that you put on and you'll sit in front of a, a computer with one to two monitors, more than likely two monitors. You'll take incoming phone calls and you'll help a homeowner uh, or a property owner uh, with their claim taking questions. Um, you are the claim owner at that point, so you're trying to get evidence from them, recorded statement, from them, you're not only listening to them on a, re a potentially recorded line, you are also taking notes. You have a file system and you just do your tippity tappity 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 of the um of the computer. You also, you know, empathize with the homeowner deeply because you're again probably their first point of contact the, the situation or the damage that they have going through so you have to be very uh, careful in your delivery and your customer service skills right because somebody could have just experienced the fire loss or it could be that they have some hail hits to their roof and um, it's you know, they're not in danger they don't need uh, relocating or make use of their additional living expenses which means that uh, your tone might be a little bit different. You might be a little bit more juvial with someone who um, has not experienced such a devastating loss, but you might also, with someone who has, try to also cheer them up, right, and just help them feel a little bit better that they're in good hands or like they're a good neighbor um, or, you know, you're the good neighbor and they're probably telling you stuff that they won't tell your neighbor because that's what people do, right? You're on the phone, they can't see you, you can't see them. Uh, additionally, as a desk adjuster, you also help with when claims uh, an outdoor adjuster goes out, does their inspection, and they may send it back up to you. For example, this condo claim I recently worked uh, with condo claims, a condo has bylaws, and in those bylaws, it should state what the bylaws or the condo community, the uh, condo association is going to cover. Uh, you know, the drywall, paint, carpet some of those things um, the condo association should cover, some of those things we should cover. It really comes down to the, the bylaws of that association. And as a, if you're getting the claim owner, so you're an indoor desk adjuster, you're the claim owner, you are going to first say, uh, if this with this condo claim, you might ask that homeowner to send the, uh, the condo bylaws. That's if you're doing your job correctly. Um, as an outdoor adjuster, a lot of times that doesn't happen indoor adjusters I'm talking to you collect those bylaws okay it makes my job easier and then you know it takes time to get those people have to go through their emails maybe they have to go to the president of the association maybe they are the president of their association so they might have it rapidly like here it goes but still um, I'm gonna send the claim back to you the indoor adjuster to go ahead and finish closing that claim send out the check and get that person paid which is a delay for the customer you have to focus on the customer if I had the bylaws, it's something that I could have reviewed, looked at, and determined, okay, what we're responsible for, sat in my car, wrote up the estimate, cut that check, handed that check over to the homeowner, or condo unit owner, still a home, um, but handed over to the condo owner, and then closed the claim and been on my way, and that's less work for you. 
However, it doesn't happen all the time, and if that happens when I get that, I send it right back over to the indoor adjuster. You can send it back over to me, but guess what? I'm gonna send it right back over to you, and it's like, it's an unnecessary back and forth. I'm just being real with you, those things do happen. I'm sure I'll get different comments like, no, you should take care of it yourself. Uh, and it's like, I mean, no, I have other claims to work. You're the claim owner, collect all the information and then send it to me so I could do my outdoor inspection. Unless you wanna come out here, you know, I doubt it. That's why I'm out here. Next, here's some other things that you'll experience as an indoor adjuster. You have your team manager, so if you do need help, they're right there. They can be, you know, right there next to you, working with you, helping you with your Xactimate, showing you exactly what to do, showing you, you know, what you need to do. Um, they're also, there's the eagle in the, the sky, right? Because they're watching you. They're making sure you're working. They're wondering why you've been idle for 45 minutes or why, um, you know, your phone is not collecting incoming calls because you didn't change the setting correctly to start accepting incoming calls. As an indoor adjuster, you also have a lot of follow-up. So again, one of those claims that I send back to you hits on your task list and now you're going back through and uh, you're looking at estimates from a contractor, uh, estimates from uh, a mitigation company, a cleanup crew <coughs> is what a mitigation company would do. And you will be responsible for looking at those and. Uh, you know handling them accordingly you also you know handle those other phone calls too and when I write my estimate I'm like listen you call this number and you talk to this claim owner okay I'm the estimator talk to your claim rep um, you're the indoor adjuster let's say you get there at 7 you do that till 12 p.m. you take your little lunch maybe you get 30 minutes 45 minutes an hour really not sure and then you You've done five hours in the morning, so you work from one until seven, I guess? One or eight? Um, I don't really know how to track time, I guess, <laughs> when you work inside. And you do that for seven days straight, and you probably do that for months at a time. If that's you, sounds fantastic. You will love it when you get that check at the end of the day. Okay, now let's talk about like what I do. Outdoor adjusting. Here's what the here's how my day goes. Okay, um, let's say I might start my day uh, at 8:30. I leave my house. Okay, so I'm like in the car by 8:30. Um, probably would take me about an hour to get to my first inspection. When I get there, um, I greet the homeowner, let them know I'm here, tell them a little bit about the process. It's a roof and claim. I do my exterior inspection. If it's not just a flooded basement or so, or um, a hole in the wall, damaged floor, leaky refrigerator. I go right inside the home. <clears throat> I'll talk to the homeowner, try to confirm with like the messaging that the indoor adjuster had. I look at the file notes and look to see if it matches what the homeowner is telling me now, looking at the damage and saying, okay, well, when did this happen? Um, how long ago was this? Um, other other questions that I always ask too would be, how long have you lived here? Um, or how old is the home? When did you first notice the damage? Do you remember the exact date? Like what time, what happened? Were you home? Who was home? Like let me talk to them, can they answer? Because you might have a kid who first noticed the damage, which has happened many a times. Um, after talking to them, I felt like, okay, this is legitimate damage. Yes, your garage, your sub pump backed up because of, due to rain and it flooded your basement. And so let me go ahead, do take my measurements. Um, depending on the, the complexity of the room, if it's just a normal bedroom, square, boom, you know, two measurement, three measurements, uh, I'm in and I'm out. I'm gone. I do my sketch. Then I'm back in my car and I write up my estimate. If it's a little bit more complex, like a basement would be, a finished basement with the poles and the curvatures that you see, the steps in the middle of the room or at the edge of the room, the laundry room in there, um, pantries I've seen, then you're walking over just stuff. You know, it might take me 30, 40 minutes to sketch out a room, okay? It just really just depends on the co complexity. Um, then after I'm done with that sketching, Sometimes what actually slows me down most of the time with my sketches is that the homeowner is talking to me and I heard you hear all types of things from homeowners But you you know get to really hear some maybe cool stories too as well 
Uh, so that really slows me down because drawing is, you know, you know, for me, I really just have to think. Like, I, I need quiet when I'm doing it, so I just have to, like, stop, answer back, and then I could continue drawing. I um, also do my pictures down there, too, as well, and depending on what type of story I'm trying to explain back to the indoor adjusters or to my TM, I am taking a lot of photos or I'm taking a few photos. Um, I go back to, you know, I go back to the car, I write up my estimate, draw out the room, I use pull up Xactimate. That's where I start. If I'm able, if I have authority to close a claim right there, I'll go ahead and just start an Xactimate. If not, I start on my file notes and type uh, type up everything that I need to do my Xactimate. But I'll let the homeowner know, like they'll be getting that check in the mail. But if I do have the authority to go ahead and close that claim, I go ahead and do my Xactimate first because that is going to give me my total dollar amount. I print that off. I hand that back to the homeowner. At the most, I'm there an hour and a half. I mean, I time myself. I try to get in and out because time is really money and I have other claims to try to get to. Then I'm back in my car. That last claim, it took me an hour. I uh, made $526. However, like this next claim I'm working on is, is more complex. She, this homeowner has uh, leaks in one, two, three, four, five, five rooms and I don't know about the laundry because I don't know I see mold but she's saying well she didn't know so just kind of you know I might have to talk to my team and see how they w really want to handle that um, that's gonna take like uh, I expect about at least two hours really not the sketch that's going to really take so much time but it's just really the estimating of the items looking at uh, working with surf pro and uh, looking at their estimate too as well and just seeing like matching up for like what they're going to clean up what we're going to put back and so i have to go through that so i'm expecting and i've um already spent uh two hours my ladder assist because the roof was too steep for me to climb up it was like a what was that pitch i think a 10 i think it was a 10 pitch um so i didn't go up on that roof but the ladder assist he took forever on you know whatever i just if it takes time it takes time i don't i never say anything i never absolutely say anything i mean as long as like hey is everything okay but we were talking to uh the homeowner that so yeah the ladder assist took a little bit of time to you know take their pictures but it is what it is and you know i'm just kicking back it was a beautiful beautiful day the homeowner and i were sitting outside um, so where was I? Oh yeah, so that took, so the ladder assist took forever up there. Sometimes they do because, I mean, they really want to, you know, they're, they're doing their job. They're doing a very thorough inspection. You know, mad love to all you ladder assist out there, uh, you know, going up on those very steep rules, which are, your gear saves me. Um, <laughs> just I mean a lot of time but I mean I'll go up there if I need to don't you know don't get me wrong but for this one it's just like hey I'll just rather just take a ladder assist for for that TM pitch um, a seven you know or eight maybe nine maybe I'll do that but uh, it be a ten it, it's a little it's a little bit steeper um, oh for that claim the one I think I'm gonna spend more time on I mean you know I I don't know how much I'm gonna make exactly on that one yet because I haven't uh, written up the estimate but it's going to be about because the roof is going to be the roof itself was i think six thousand four hundred so when i look at um the work that i did with that i don't know maybe i'll make another 1200 or so but i was already there for an hour and a half you know i was already there for an hour and a half so when i'm looking like okay i spent the hour at this other place um uh, 526 dollars then I'm going for an hour and a half, eleven hundred plus, uh, um, plus an, or maybe twelve hundred on that one. Um, plus I'm gonna spend another four hours, so you know my hourly rate starts to drop the more time I spend on the claim. So I'm looking at like twelve hundred dollars, like ugh, I don't even want it. it. Sucks. But I'm looking at my time, right? My time is way more valuable than dollar amounts at this point. Okay, so I'll maybe, maybe do a, um, a few claims a week, especially um, outside of a deployment. During the deployment, it's going to be like uh, three to maybe five claims a day. So, I mean, I'm running back to back to back to back to back. But I also have these paper days in between. So, on that fourth day, I'm just in no claims running. I am just in my space, hotel, car, whatever. Panera Bread, wherever I set up shop that day, and I'm working. Okay, I'm making phone calls back to my team, like let's get these claims closed. I'm running, but talking back to my firm, like, or I'm calling 
the um, the insurers for future claims and to set up those appointments too. Um, that's that's what I do on my paper day. That's every fourth day, but it's not perfect math. Sometimes I might go seven days without a paper day. My mistake, because like people, oh, I can't make it. I need to reschedule. Well, let me try to squeeze you in. But on a straight paper day, some of those calls come out when I'm at the, like I'm tomorrow Monday. All right, um, I'll be making calls, getting my nails done, and things of that nature. But then Tuesday, I got uh, two clients: Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, I'm uh, you know I'm booked, bonanza booked. So I you know I just have to manage my time, get my hair done, my nails done, my beauty day Monday. I'm just excited for that. That's what I'm. That's what I plan on doing. So hair, nails done, everything done on Monday, and then I can go in because when you look good, you feel good, and when you feel good, you can work really well. And when you work well, you get paid well. And that's all I'm about. If you're looking at be, whether you should be do indoor outdoor adjusting, uh, I know a lot of people who won't get on the roofs, and not just females either. So there's female. There's a lot of female adjusters out there. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, you know, I'm too pretty, I'm too blah blah blah, cute uh, and something. Them, whatever you know you know so be it but when you start working component as an outdoor adjuster that's where you make the real mega money the real big bucks and um, that's up to you I mean hey $30 an hour plus is really good as an indoor adjuster still life-changing money but then there's a whole nother shift of money too and I meet adjusters who go from outside try inside and then come back outside but then go back inside again because like they're getting old and I told you you can replace those adjusters I just was talking to one on LinkedIn he was like oh yeah I got tired of adjusting so I mean he's doing his own thing now and then outdoor adjusters also do get to travel more when I was um, you know you get to eat at fantastic places I mean I've been to Miami six times um, the smoothie shop off of Collins and I think 11th is like my favorite they have the smoked sandwich stuff uh, uh, wrap and they have green juice smoothies and then you can go to uh, Drunken Dragons I believe like you'll never find it but it's really good down there in Miami you can see at the Hilton Cabana beautiful hotel um, I've been to Knoxville, Tennessee. I've been up to like Asheville, North Carolina. I think that's the name of that really small, potent little city. Um, you know, ate at mom and pop shops. Those are, you know, the best. You get to really get a community vibe. Um, I've been to Mobile um, multiple times. I've been to uh, Biloxi. I love Biloxi. If you're ever in Biloxi, go to Box Life. It's a CrossFit gym. Speak to, uh, oh, I want to say her name starts with it. Laura. Laura. Um, she's really fantastic, really great coach, whips you in the shape, you hate her while she's working you out, but you love her once you're done. It's a really cool place. Um, I've also been to Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I've been to Charleston, South Carolina multiple times. I've been to Jacksonville, I've been to Orlando. I've been to Tampa a couple, no, I've been to Tampa once, been to Orlando three times. I've been to Fort Myer. I've been to a lot of places. Um, Charlotte is a really nice town. I think I've only been there once or twice. I can't remember. Anyway, if you find this video very helpful, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And then also don't forget to comment because I, I do look at those comments and I'll try to answer them uh, and make sure you get the props for, you know, asking that question. And I think somebody asked the question on this one, so that's why I made this video right here. Um, also, go to www.majoradjusters.com to find out more information about a just to end and get on my job list because I am always notifying all the insider tips to people on those job lists first and then I put them out in my monthly uh, job hiring video post too as well. If you need anything you can book a call with me. I love taking phone calls and answering questions from any and every single state out there. Shout out to my students in Maryland, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, and Virginia and of course Georgia like the best state in the whole entire world. And from there, if you have any desire to earn money and work claims, come on board with us. We are unleashing some phenomenal strategies for 2020. I believe that what we're doing, we're gonna be changing the face of public adjusting and adjusting in general nationally. We're licensed in 46 states, so come on board with Ibahi and myself and we'll show you how to do this and make money. We're hiring a lot of independent adjusters that have never been sent out on any on any duties yet and uh, we're helping you to get started and get moving in the public adjusting industry. You can work on the bright side, okay?